Hello again. Um, so we're switching gears here a little bit. Um, we're not so much now talking about social media and the impacts it has upon the way in which we see the world and our political ideologies and all of that. But now we're talking specifically about how popular culture, pop culture, um, affects the global community, okay? So, interna it, the internationalization of popular culture, I'm sorry. And Snickers says hello. If it were not a COVID year, he would be in class visiting all you guys, but that's probably not safe during these times. So, and this is a short PowerPoint. Uh, there are just some important definitions that you have to know and ideas that you have to be able to speak. So now we're starting to think, there we go, of these kind of questions. So how does our favorite music in one country affect the taste of music around the world? How is the internet bringing countries closer together and becoming more globalized? How do movies and television affect globalization and influence opinions of globalization? How does the global spread of famous video games affect globalization? So now we're just talking, so pop culture being music, movies, television, YouTube, um, social media, you know, anything that's trending, um, video games. How does that shape what's popular in other areas of the world? So, for example, popular American music is typically what is going to trend on the charts. Okay, your top 40 is usually made up of American artists. There's some Canadian, there's some European, um, there's some K-pop, but for the most of it, it's American artists. So the, how does that shape then what kind of music is popular in other parts of the world? Well, if you're an Australian artist, you're, and, and your goal is to reach the top 40, to trend on the charts, then you're going to have to adopt the American style of music. You're going to have to because that's what's popular. Same with if you want to make a TV show, if you're going to write a show for Netflix, well, what's popular on Netflix? You're going to have to speak to those trends and what, what, it, what is popular. So we're now talking about how our pop culture influences other cultures, okay? And um, we're going to do like some a few little activities with that. But essentially, what is most important for this PowerPoint is that you know these following definitions because you can't speak to it without knowing first what is acculturation and how is that different from assimilation so acculturation is a term you do have to know especially for your unit exam um, your unit exam for this unit is the exact same as last one 35 multiple choice and you'll most likely be writing that on monday okay so acculturation is the transfer of value and customs from one group to another um, it's the transfer of cu customs, but it doesn't mean that you've lost your culture completely. It just means that you've adopted certain things from other cultures while maintaining, you know, other elements, certain aspects of your own culture. And we're going to watch a video that explains it very well as well. So, for example, um, people in Japan dressing in Western clothing is an example of acculturation. Um, it doesn't mean that they've lost their Japanese traditions and heritage and culture, it just means that they've adopted American clothing or Western um, clothing. That's an example of acculturation. Assimilation, however, is when, an, when a minority culture is fully absorbed into the majority culture and you no longer identify as your minority culture. You now just identify as whatever culture you've assimilated into. So whether that be um, Canadian. So if you, you come from Croatia and you decide that once you've moved to Canada, you, you don't want to identify as Croatian anymore, you're no longer going to speak that language, you're no longer going to cook uh, your traditional food, you are simply going to identify as Canadian, well that would be more of an example of assimilation. Okay, So assimilation is when the minority culture is fully absorbed into the majority culture. Whereas acculturation, 
occurs when the minority culture changes but is still able to retain unique cultural markers of language, food, customs, that sort of a thing. So you might listen to American music, you might wear American clothes, you might enjoy Western Hollywood films, but that doesn't mean you've given up your culture. It just means you've adopted certain aspects of the dominant culture, American culture, we'll say, or pop culture, okay? So acculturation can be a two-way process where both cultures are changed as well. This lady does a nice job of explaining it. So we will watch this video. So the terms assimilation and acculturation you may have heard before, and unless you're an expert on kind of sociology, you might not fully understand what the difference is. So I just want to break it down so you understand kind of how to use them or if you hear them, what they mean. So assimilation is a term that is used when you kind of take on a new culture as your own. So you're absorbing yourself into it and you really kind of become identified by that new culture. And acculturation is adopting traits and pieces of a culture, but still maintaining your original culture as well. So when you want to focus on, you know, if someone identifies as multicultural or bicultural, some people who may have immigrated earlier on, a few decades ago, it wasn't really trendy to kind of maintain your culture. Really, it came down to survival. You wanted to appear as American. They may have tried to get rid of their accent. They may have tried to not want their children to learn English or to learn, you know, their old language. They wanted them to learn English because they really wanted them to feel assimilated because... Just to be frank, it was it was deemed more more acceptable to want to be this version of American. And nowadays, it seems like we're really starting to step back a little bit and being more prideful about where people are coming from and holding on to those cultures. So nowadays, you might find that parents who are bilingual, they're teaching their kids. I know a couple that one woman, she speaks Spanish and her husband, you know, is black and they speak to their kids. One might speak in Spanish, the child has to respond in English. The dad, he speaks in English, the child has to respond in Spanish. So that is an example of acculturation, of maintaining and adopting different parts of cultures. And another kind of metaphor that works is think of it as a salad. You throw in tomatoes, you throw in you know, cucumbers, different elements, and you're kind of picking up different cultures here and there. So say if you're immigrating from you know, Korea, and you want your kids to be acculturated to American culture, but not lose their Korean culture, you'll, you'll teach them about the food, you'll want them to learn Korean, but you'll also understand that they're going to pick up on things at school. But assimilation would be someone who would be like, you don't speak Korean at all, you have to speak English, and that's sort of an older way of thinking. It does still exist for certain cultures, but just keep that in mind that, you know, assimilation is more like a soup. You're kind of absorbing and getting rid of the old culture, where acculturation is adopting different traits but also maintaining your own. So this comes into play for people who are bicultural because they oftentimes have to kind of step in and out of their native culture and then American kind of traditional culture. And they do that by going to school. If you grow up in a public school, you're going to learn English. You're going to make friends with people who come from different backgrounds. But when you go home, if your parents don't speak the language, you're going to have to kind of switch back. So that's where these terms kind of come into play for people who kind of have to live in both cultures. But we just want to make sure that those terms are clear whenever you read them or if you use them. But I think that we're starting to enter an era that it's becoming more acceptable to kind of embrace multiple different cultures. You know, people are starting to kind of, you know, get married to people of different cultures. So I think that those terms will probably not be as strongly used in the future, but just as context for you, depending on whether you're talking to older generations or younger that are bicultural, those terms might pop up. So in terms of, you know, practically what can you do with these terms and how can you know what is appropriate to use or, or what is not, I would say always look for that personal connection. 
what are interests that you share? If you have kids and they have kids, what are those common values that you're trying to teach your children? And finding those similarities will kind of... Okay. So hopefully that clarifies those two terms for you. Um, I'm just telling you now, you have to know them for the unit exam. You're going to be given examples, um, you know, images or uh, a source, and it's going to ask you, is this an example of acculturation? Or is this an example of assimilation? And you're going to have to choose between the two. Um, you've probably noticed that... You've probably noticed that the unit exam, yes, it's multiple choice, yes, the answers are there, but you have to be able to show uh, critical analytical thinking skills. So it's not just definitions, multiple choice, it's all source-based in grade 10. Every question, almost every single question, is going to be based on a source, so you interpreting the source correctly. So it's, it's not just about whether or not you understand and have memorized the definition, it's whether or not you can see a political cartoon and recognize assimilation within that cartoon. So it's more difficult than, you know, a typical grade 9 multiple choice exam in which really all we're testing in grade 9 is do you know the definitions or not. Uh, now it's a step further, okay? The final, um, sorry, I think there is one more. Yeah, there's two more definitions that you have to know. Um, cultural homogenization. You can probably guess what it means by the, by the name. So cultural homogenization is an aspect of cultural globalization and refers to the reduction in cultural diversity through the popularization and diffusion of a wide array of cultural customs, ideas, values. Cultural homog homogenization is very, very similar to acculturation. Um, however, with cultural homogenization, we are referring only to cultural aspects um, of a certain group. And finally, revitalization. Revitalization is a process through which unique cultures regain a sense of identity, such as promoting heritage, languages, and reviving traditions and customs. In other words, it's the bringing back of a group or a way of life that has been lost or is dying. So we talked a little bit about, you know, as a, as a lasting impact of residential schools, a lot of indigenous language was lost. There were multiple indigenous languages. Um, now, as a form of revitalization, Cree is being taught in a lot of schools. Um, so that is one way in which the indigenous community is trying to regain something that has been lost. And it doesn't speak only to language. It can speak to traditions, uh, spiritual practices, food, anything to do with, with a group's culture can be revitalized. Okay, So just the idea of taking back something that has been lost and making it your own once again. Um, these are just some examples of how um, pop culture, like the, uh, going back to the title, the internationalization of pop culture. So these are some things that would be recognized all over the world. Friends, Hunger Games, Hello Kitty, Pokemon, Pokemon uh, Harry Potter, Coca-Cola, one Direction, not all of these are American. Uh, One Direction is European, Hello Kitty is Japanese, Friends, very American, Hunger Games, very American, Harry Potter, European. So it, it, it doesn't mean that 
pop culture is only um, specific to American culture, although that is largely um, a part of it, but it can be it can be from around the world, and it is from around the world. Um, here you see Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a very American company, and here you'll see um, I've written in, I think, Japanese. Um, so just the idea that, and we read this in a source before, that you can buy Coca-Cola in the middle of the jungle, okay? It's everywhere. Same with McDonald's. Uh, here we've got a political cartoon of a lovely American family saying, we got these cool hats in Nike Town in Paris and this great shirt in the Disney store in London. After a great dinner at McDonald's in Rome, we found these neat shorts at the Gap. So a well-traveled family, however, in their travels, they are only partaking in sort of American um, experiences, McDonald's, Disney, Nike. Okay, so even though they are traveling the world and globe trotting, they are still able to remain true to their American culture if they so choose. Okay, and that's it for this PowerPoint. I will see you guys tomorrow, and I hope you are all doing well.